My name is Sergeant Wes Dyer, United States Marine Corps. I served in 1st Combat Engineer Battalion, 1st Marine Division. I was a uh, counter IED detection dog handler in Afghanistan, southern Afghanistan. I was there from you know, 2009 from May to about November. My dog and I would go out alongside uh, EOD teams, um, route clearance teams. We would go out and we would find uh, and locate devices, um, live IEDs that were set in the earth, um, primarily by Taliban, um, put in the way to uh, kill and destroy our forces. Our dogs came in handy because they, they could pick up the scent coming up through the earth, indicate that there was a device. Um, from there, we would either interrogate it or blow it in place. I was involved in an engagement in August uh, 2009. Uh, we got a little bit off course and the town that we ended up near was uh, a Taliban hornet's nest. Um, and we ran into quite literally an IED minefield. A total of 15 Marines were, were, in those, were involved in those blasts. That firefight actually ended up lasting almost uh, 25 hours. When I was attempting to to get to the Marines and give them safe passage out with a mine detector. A truck hit a device and I was injured in that explosion. That engagement at the time was one of the worst in, in uh, Helmand Province, Afghanistan, in what we called the fish hook. They found that uh, I had fractures in my spine at the base of my skull and about midway down through my back. While it's a joyous occasion for you and your family, you're back, you know, a lot of changes come around. Very easy around that time to feel um, alone just because, you know, the military across all branches is such a tight-knit group. You know, we, you never, you're never alone. There's always somebody, you know, and then as, as everyone starts to get out or stay in, they disperse around, so it comes down to phone calls. Negotiating with the way that civilian life goes from employment to just handling the way that the public treats each other is, is, a, is a shock. Especially after what, how much you go through and that you believe that you're doing this, you know, for the betterment of your, of your countrymen and then, um, you know, to see the way that civilians can sometimes treat each other, it's heartbreaking. And negotiating your way back into a peaceful existence is something that, that can be difficult. Friendship after what you've gone through with your brothers is a totally different thing now. It takes a very special person, I think, for a veteran to involve them in their lives and, and to a point where they, they depend on them, they call them a friend. You don't want to ever lose touch with that, that warrior spirit that you have inside of you because it's forever a part of us. It's always going to be there no matter what or who you talk to. It'll always be there. But I think it's extremely important on the other spectrum for combat veterans to find that, that way to come back into a, a peaceful existence around civilian life and, and, and knowing that you still have a purpose, you know what I mean, and driving forward. It's not just working towards the end of the day or whatever. You know, you have, you have goals and, and, and you have life still approaching you, you know, it's not done yet just because you're, you're done with your mission. I read somewhere that the three keys to happiness are, are find someone to love, find something to do, and find something to look forward to. And in, I think that fly fishing takes up a large portion of that for me. It is a discipline, and the more and more that I practice this discipline, I find it to, to be an art form. And I think that's why it was appealing to me in the first place, because it is an elite thing to do. It is difficult, and it, it takes that discipline, and it takes a, a lot of research and time and development. It doesn't come easily being, being even decent at this game, you know what I mean? And I think that's something that attracted me to it. It ended up being such a great thing for me because it, it gave me that opportunity to, to better myself, something to focus on, um, other than, you know, completely different than warfare, combat, not shooting, not anything. It's, this is an epic adventure of a game. You get these fish on the line and, and, and you pull them in, and the greatest part about it is that at the end of this battle, um, this engagement, you know, both sides are left unharmed, you know. There's a, there's a respect for life in it that I very much uh, was drawn to. And when you, when you release that fish, you hold him in your hand and you let him go back to his place and, and, and both sides leave, you know, unharmed and wiser for the engagement.
when that elation is done and your hands are shaking and you're so excited and it's you've gotten your picture, you've let him go and you're and you're taken in by your surroundings and everything around you that that's that moment gives you peace and there is nothing else going on. No combat stressors back in society. It's just you and you're there. You end up finding peace. Even if it's just for a moment, it matters because the more and more those peaceful moments start coming to you, the better that you're able to handle every single day. There is hope and there is new things on the horizon for you, whatever it is that you, that you find yourself passionate about, chase it with everything that you have and try to be great at it, you know? That's, that's the military, we don't do anything just to be good at it, we do everything to be great.